And I wrote a song. I was literally talking on the phone to Kim, and the song started going through my head. And that song is Child of My Heart. And it was a duet, and I needed a man to sing the man's part. It's like the adoptive mother and father singing to this child. You may not be the child of my blood, but you're the child of my heart. And it's as if I was in that seat, as if I was that mother and that father. And the Lord led me to Tommy Brandt, of all people we consider. Love Tommy. <laughs> I do love him. I love him. And we were considering Colin Ray for the project, uh, Billy Ray Cyrus, and several others. And the Lord said, no, Tommy. I'm like, who's Tommy? And he's my man. Wow. And, the, and the Lord knew he was the one. And, and his family and my family are just, of course, very close now. And then we end up winning Duo of the Year at the Agape Fest in 2006 with that one song, and we're not even a duo except for that song. Right. It was just a God thing confirming. And then the next year, the Lord just started pouring on more and more songs about adoption and foster kids and orphans and even um, songs reaching out to birth mothers who are in a very difficult place to have to make a decision for life or death for their child if they can't raise their child to hopefully choose life and choose a family, right. create a family for that child as opposed to giving that child a death sentence because you're in a bad situation. So the, song, the songs in the album that I'm working on kind of cover that whole gamut, pro-life, crisis pregnancy ministry, foster mm. children, orphans, not just in the United States, although that's kind of my focus, um, and then adoption as well. And I said, Lord, why are you giving me all of these songs? And in 2008, that whole year, that's the year that I won the Female Songwriter of the Year. And I had just written a bunch more songs about adoption and foster parenting and then went into the studio in August of 2008 with Robert Jason, my producer, phenomenal producer and uh, songwriter himself, and started recording the first two singles from this Heart of Adoption album. And again, I'm like, Lord, I'm spending all this time, all this money and all this on songs about this. And I just thought, you know, it's kind of like missions. Either you're the one to go you're the one to, to pray, you're the one to send by giving money, or you're the motivator. You're the person to call the church to action particularly. And I thought, well, I'm just the motivator. I'm the voice to get everybody else to jump in and, and consider being a foster parent. And you hear so many children on the waiting child segment and so forth, not just in right. Tulsa, but around the country. And you hear so many foster children say, I want to be adopted by a Christian home. I want to go to church because my foster family took me to church. What a powerful ministry to wow. be a foster parent. So it kind of started that way. And after the fact, on a very long concert tour last in that summer of 2008, we went on 4,000-mile, 14-state concert tour, and I actually met the children that, unbeknownst to me, would be my children today. That they've, you They've adopted. been with us one year Yesterday, Jeffrey and JC, Mama loves you, and all my other oh, kids wow. too. Don't make me cry now. Mess up my <laughs> makeup. Okay, so you had no idea that you were going to. I mean, you just happened to view what another parent or two other parents were doing. Yes. And you admired that so much, and God just took you on a journey. It started with one song. And even with that one song, you didn't know that you would end up adopting. No, and then I started um, being asked to speak uh, at adoption and foster parenting conferences all over the country. And now that I have my own adopted children that are not even finalized with the adoption yet. They're still technically foster children. And wow. they've been in our home one year yesterday. So one year ago yesterday, my husband and I took three flights to get from here to West Virginia, spent a few hours, took the children to the Capitol building, which they'd never been to in Charleston. They lived about two hours south of there. They'd never been to a Chuck E. Cheese. They'd never been to a zoo. Aww. And, you know, it's just like a whole new world to them. And yet I see how much they've lost from their birth family. So we're trying to meld that all together and help bring healing for them. Well, now, you know, you're the singer. Your husband doesn't sing, does he? Oh, no. So, so what, <laughs> you, you wouldn't always expect it to be where the husband and wife agree on something like that, though. I mean, he's, he stepped into something that yeah. he wasn't as prepared for in the beginning as, as no. you that's singing about it. No, so. and, he, and he's, he's 14 years my senior, so believe me, he spoils our daughter, little JC, just like a grandpa should. <laughs> But let me tell you how it happened. On my concert tour in 2008, we went, like I said, through 14 states, and we stopped in West Virginia actually twice. On the way back, we were going to make some time to find these children. The little boy was eight. His name is Jeffrey, and he was technically, biologically my cousin, although I hadn't seen him since he was 11 months old. And when my mother found that 
that our concert tour was taking us through West Virginia. She said, I think your long lost little cousin lives in West Virginia. You should look him up and go visit him. I have his grandmother's phone number. Grandmother was raised and the mother still has a drug problem. And of course the father's dead and, and she's since had another baby and they don't know who the daddy is. So he's got a little half sister and she's two and you should really go see them. So we did. We, and then the grandmother and the aunt brought the children. We all met at a park for about an hour. And about the last five minutes of that time, of course, I'm walking around doing what I always do, being on the side of the camera that I much prefer, which is on the other side, taking pictures of the children Mm -hmm. and the little sister so the kids could see what little Jeffrey looks like and what his little sister looks like. The last five minutes or so, I picked up this little girl because she was just adorable and carried her around for only five minutes. And as it's about time to go, I hand her back to her grandmother and she reaches back towards me and starts to cry. Oh, wow. I'm a stranger. I've held her for five minutes. Then I started to cry, and my niece, who we took with us on the trip, started to cry, and then my boys started to cry, and everybody's crying, and we feel this incredible magnet. And as we get in the car, the Lord spoke to me so plainly, but it was so, it was so far-fetched, I couldn't even voice it to my husband. I thought, he's going to just drop me off on the side of the road if I say this. <laughs> the Lord said, these are going to be your children. Like, What? They have a grandmother. Even if something happens to her, they have an aunt, you know, about the same age as me. She knows them. They don't know me. And all I did was gave Jeffrey a little CD with my picture on it so he wouldn't forget his cousin in Oklahoma. And the Lord brought that to fruition a few months later. Oh, wow. It's it's still mind-boggling to me. We're going to have to break for a quick commercial here. When we get back, we'll get to listen to Becky Wright sing a couple of songs that really is the heart of this adoption. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 